pick and you can see he's trying to figure it out will just take the oriana not going to be the best in lane but something that does incredibly well when you're looking at malrang who wants to go in and start these fights in the vibe the last pick that comes in is the oriana going to be pretty much team fight galore oh, we'll have now to answer that particular setup but for the moment it's all been nice easy breezy Maran gets himself a dragon so just as weird. so that's gonna be all bot lane from the side of koi but now top side is Cassante is in a lot of trouble here he does not have flash he does use his ghost he's gonna try and maybe get away from this one here but with the lulu there the first blood comes in kaiser picks that one up with the ignite and that is a nice little move there from Vitality to try and answer for that bot lane pressure. Yeah, they should be able to get another plate, but Neon's in no man's land. He really is. He has the ghost popping and he's going to try and get himself away, maybe with the flash. But I think he knows he's dead to rights regardless of what happens. So he keeps that summoner. That's a trade of one for one. But most importantly, Koi got the tower as well. I mean, Vitality should get the tower off this charge too. So at least it will be terror for terror. But I think this is... Yeah, Drippy's a bit over. I don't think you want to be here, man. He's going to try and keep himself alive as much as he can. He trades back one kill because the tower just stacked up. Didn't even lose his flash and Trimby styling. Larson will need to back away, but Koi will, should be able to get this dragon unless oh. both can get the steal. He's looking for it right now. They're trying to just kind of make them think twice about going for this. Malran gets polymorphed as we can see Comp going in. Now you've got Larson getting a little bit more mana down. And some support will combat sees the Lulu fall. The Soraka, again, Vitality tried to hard force it, but like you said, it just didn't fail pretty much. You are missing, though, a flash on Malrang. Here we go. Rift Herald down to about 1700. Here we go. I'm going to try to see Malrang try and go for a little bit of a steal. It's secured by Bo. As if I can really ensue, you've got the Gwen on the backside, but Comp is just doing so, so much. He finally gets a little bit of damage thrown onto him, but look at him just lasering people down. They can't prioritize him. They can't keep the damage to stick, and Comp just shreds through Vitality. Comp got a flash forward, gets himself a third, and Koi are coming alive over the course of this weekend. Fantastic. And he's still 3,000 gold behind, so if Comp dies, it's a big issue for Koi, but if he doesn't, Vitality are going to have a massive issue trying to get rid of him. And that kind of thing, so I think for Vitality, big question now is how do you try and wrangle this one back? Because Koi are not slowing down. Even Leandri's Torment now completed for Larson. You're going to have that. Koi just going to trade this for a mid lane turret as well. Yeah. It's like, look. Oh, Neon, he does not get away. He flashes over the wall, but I don't think he's really going to be able to try and back and forth. And now a Baron about to spawn when we're already looking down at a soul for Koi as well. Koi still the one's in control. Here. This Trimby finally walks up. Now they know what's going on. And the TV's coming in. It looks like Vitality are going to fully commit to this. I mean, you know, you've only got the vision of the wall. They need to stop Maurer and getting into the pit. Here we go. They're going to stop him right now. And they secure it. Vitality are not willing to take a 5v5 so they take away the big purple worm. But now they need to get these... Baron buffs out Bo using the team. They can get the mid lane turn, but yeah, I mean, Vitality won't get here in time. Get themselves back onto the map to try and push this one around. And yeah, that's Dragon Souls. Uh, definitely Vitality now up against the wall and a long climb ahead of them that is certainly uphill. At least the TP's coming in. Vitality want to try and take out Larson before this fight can really begin. He's going to get a fair chunk onto him. He shockwaves to try and save himself some time. Ooh, does nice little sidestep to keep himself there, but a flash forward by Bo does knock him up and he gets shut down. Bo picks up that kill. This is smart from Vitality. They know they can take a 5v4 around the Baron Pit, but they don't need to do it right now. They can still look for poke damage. Cassante should be coming in and should be tanky enough to walk away. But now 4v5, you're feeling good, but there is still a TP on Larson. They need to take this quick. Yeah, I mean, Larson's just not gonna be up for 30 seconds now. They should be able to get this reset and go for the Elder Dragon fight as well. Trimby already taking relatively low. Oh. Photon still has ult as well. Keep your eyes on the Gwen. Rise on the Gwen, Malrang on the top side, the Gwen goes in on top, but Malrang lost his, half his HP, and now the Needlework's coming in, Trimby's already very low as well, the full fight, but the Gwen is dead, now you're looking at the Sivir as Comp moves forward fearlessly, Neon finally takes a kill on the Trimby, but you're going to see if you can make this fight work, double kill for the Zeri, it's so damn close, but you got to remember, that was a 5v4, but, uh, alive, it becomes very hard for Koi to push against it, and try and use this Elder Dragon. Elder does get picked up, a couple more seconds, and you would imagine, this Baron should be secured. Larson's walking over, and yes, there's the Baron buff finally going over. A couple more seconds. You've got pretty much like, like four-fifths of the Dragon gone, so you'll lose this outer turret. You're not going to lose any inhibitors, and it is going to be a pretty easy defense now for White. Boat. Starting to step forward. Yeah, he knows that the Elder's going to be going off very, very soon as they try and find... Oh my god, they've got the Cassante down. He's already gone into stasis. The team's have a life. Bo still taking down with a little bit of the Elder, but now Photon tries to get in with the Needlework. They're moving forward. Larson very low, but a great shockwave stops the support. No cavalry for you. Perk's trying to do the damage on the backside, but Comp is so healthy. Comp is just massive in 
Trimby's fight, and Koi may look for the end of boss. Trimby's doing a ton of work, Malran getting the pick on towards Neon as well, and now as you say, a wave is here, Koi, they want to take game one. They want to take game one, they don't want to wait for the next spawns of Baron or Elder, you still have some decent wave cleared though with perks, you got to be very, very careful, he will do significant damage, and there's still a Baron buff ticking up, so hard to make this one stick, here we go, they're going to try and make this one on top of the carries, but with Bo moving in to try and deal with the minions, he will fall, but he did his job. Do they wait for the next wave? They've got a couple more seconds till the Sivir and the Gwen respawn, and they're going for a reset for TP in. I mean, there's the TP, Shigeta just trying to keep the wave on Perk sidestep! He sidesteps, Malran goes gold, and Nexus to at number one falls. It looks like Koi have found themselves an opportunity. All they needed was one fight. Kaiser goes in, but immediately he cannot do anything about it. They don't even care about the Lulu. They've dealt with it. They don't need to move forward with it, and they can take down the Nexus. Perks tried to hold. So uh, not the greatest of omens to give, but you've double AD, and we're seeing Adam getting a little bit of a, a reference here. Going to see now Photon taking the Olaf into that top side into Cassante. So a lot of priority again in the solo lane. Sure prevented him from having any sort of plays at comp now. Starting shield early. Yeah, starting shield, which means they can flash in. Knowing he doesn't have an aggressive setup here where the Ignite goes down before the heal comes out. Comp flashes over the wall. Kaiser has nowhere to go. And Kaiser will fall. First blood to the bot lane. Oh. Easy first blood. Now Bo immediately going for the level two. But Maorang is here to match. They spotted him. They had a ward on him there. So they now know with the Javelin Toss coming in, it will be a 3v2 in favor of Koi. They're going to try and jump in as we started. Spell shield and the barrier. Oh, Daikta, this is disaster. If they can secure this kill, Maorang gets that one. You still have an Ash. He's pushing forward. Kaiser will be able to get out with the dredge line. Bo gets spotted. Maorang's here. And without the spear landing, spell shield's still available for comp. I don't know if that was communicated to Bo that spell shield was up, because you don't traditionally expect it as a jungler, but it means that Bo ends up paying the price as well. Yeah, this is... Uh... And again, look, you know, regardless of how the bot lane was doing as well, jungler, you need to start fights, and you're going to keep going for this one. Maorang pushing forward here, going to try and catch out Kaiser. Yeah, he's dead to rights. Nothing he can really do there. And this is quite... They're slaughtering. Your next priority, because it feels like you need to try and go for something, but maybe not in the mid lane. You do not have flash here for perks. He's going to be able to use the soul unbound, but guess what? That goes up, must come down, and ooh, not quite able to get away from the Emperor's Divide. Maorang, three. Looking for the play, does get the flash in, and... The ult back perks, just trying to wait for his support and jungler to really help him out, but you've got the range advantage and you're just peppering down these health bars. Larson picks up his first kill of this game, five and zero. Now on bot side, comp trying to see if he can do something on the hunt, has been used, the heal as well. Neon trying or something like that. It is two full levels in terms of support and not having access to your ultimate as a Nautilus just feels so debilitating and See Photon and Sugenda trying to go crazy in the top side. We will come back in here now into the oh, bottom lane as Comp picks up a kill. Nautilus into an Ash lane. It is all about the level one. It is all about getting these advantages so you can try to drop the Rift Held into that mid lane. Gonna get a couple of plates. Bo gets hit by an arrow. Gets jumped on by Malran. They're gonna try and knock him over the wall. I'm not gonna be able to get it, but it doesn't matter. The damage is just too damn good. It sticks to him like glue. Perk's trying to see if he can outplay this. Flashes towards his dragon, but the wind becomes lightning, and your death is confirmed. Towards the mid game as well, using them towards side lane, setting up kills for Shigenda, fixing Shigenda's lane, honestly, with that pick as well. So I think Koi. I mean, this is a fantastic performance. Not having that ultimate available for just a little bit longer, but Malrang going to run into many members here. He is going to run into many members. Just got the ultimate off, so the Crescent Guard good, but you got Trimby coming in here alongside Comp. I don't know if you want to try and fight this. The flash in, though, to shut him down. First kill of the game for Vitality. Goes a Photon, but the cleanup crew of Larson is here. I will say Perks does get a nice little kill back. Is Trimby very, very low? It's just turning what? around. Vitality just take a fight. fight but Hoy take a little bit of step too far forward, but it's still a nearly 4,000 gold deficit that Vitality have to overcome. And the big thing is Vitality have to go for those fights. They take this early to mid game. It's still the early game. We haven't hit the mid just yet. We will see Trimby moving forward to try and see if he can maybe get a cheeky steal. They're doing a good job of trying to play out map states, trying to see if they can keep these advantages going, collecting some of this standing uh, bounties on the turrets as well. But Koi get top, they get mid. And I think this is going to be kind of the name of the game you see going far further is Koi having access to two of those. See the game slow down a little bit here, though. As I say, that Perks gets his. He does get hit right in the face. It's going to take a while for him to go down. Perks actually moves down towards this... Uh... 
I'm not quite sure exactly what he was trying to I think that might have been go. the worst possible direction for him. Yeah, I was going to say, look, at a 360 degrees. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if he lands the Fate Seal, maybe it's a different conversation. But it does not happen. Koi do pick themselves up a kill. He dressed, says TP topside. Yeah, another Ash Arrow does land. It's going to hit onto Bo, who's still stunned as he tried to get over the side of the wall. Not quite yet, but... It's the thing with the uh, cooldown Ash, it's already a quarter of the way done. Kaiser runs forward, Kaiser taking a lot of damage, and Kaiser falls, but they're gonna take the fight anyway. It's a one for one, you lost a jungler for a support. TP comes in from Perks, it's almost a mirror of the last fight around Red Bull. We saw Larson might be in a lot of trouble here. He does get the ultimate out to try and stop Perks from getting anything else. It's Agenda, Silica Sante, they go forward. Trimby's left all isolated on his own. Finally, Comp joins the fight, and Comp can start to really rip through them. Eventually, the Larson will die. The Baron's still doing damage. Baron plays for Vitality, and Baron sets it up on a nice little play. Bo will not be taken down just yet, but Kopp is doing so much for this coil. Him to almost get out, Trimby to get over the wall, but Kopp, as soon as he arrives from the mid lane, that's the difference maker here, where he's chasing members of Vitality out through this. He sees down as well. Kopp takes a full javelin to the face, and that brings him down to just above half HP, but it is these TPs, though, because honestly, I think if you actually spread out and you're able to force numbers advantages, you can go for it. Here we go. They're going to go all out here with the Cassante. It takes them very, very low, but they've got some decent damage here. It's a full 5v5 once more. The Fate Seal doesn't really do a lot, and now these health bars are going to start going down. Good sweep coming out from Larson. And I think we're already starting to hit that late game stage. There's just too much gold. And quite punish. I mean, look at that. Three items onto the silver. Comp game one and game two has just been the lead yeah. from uh, <laughs> uh, just a single player. And I mean, Comp has had a fantastic game. 7-1 and 7. Nerdy having his fourth item complete as well. And now with the Baron up creep wave, they're just going to start to siege this one. Oh, Neon my God. Is... Neon might be dead right now. They're going to look for Malran to get him. He didn't even throw anything out. Just the pure idea that he might be able to kill him forces the ultimate out of Neon. Yes, you're getting turrets on the top side, but you're going to lose the game, Vitality. You can't just let this continue. I mean, they were never going to be able to hold on to the spot lane turret, but now Photon does need to reset because Koi are setting their eyes on Nexus turrets. Shigenda moving in towards the mid lane turret. It's going to be a second inhibitor turret to fall. And Vitality, they don't have anything. Kaiser needs to try and find an engage, but you're in a Nautilus that is so far behind. Level 9 at 26 minutes in the game. Yeah, level 9, he is three levels down on his opposite number, Trimby, and they are already on to the Nexus turrets. Ash Arrow goes wide. You can see the Koi kind of reset themselves around these Baron minions. Here we go, the Fate Seal lands on the two, but Perks immediately has to bring himself back. Larson goes golden after getting the sweep, and it's going to be just that, you would imagine, for the side of Koi. They are going to take down the number one seed of the regular winter split in a 2-0 fashion and they're gonna look damn good doing it. Playoffs is here, Koi turning around the number one in the regular split and Koi are the ones that are taking them down. It's gotta feel good. See on Twitter, Maoran, Comp and Trimby. Honestly, it, it could go to anybody. I think it, even just in that game, it was just... Just such a great setup for them. But. Yeah, I love how in these games we kind of like fob it off onto the audience being like, you decide, eh? Like, because honestly, three of them played absolutely spectacularly. The bot lane was popping off. Mal ranked five games or five kills in the early stage of this game. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah, really, really was. Well, we're going to send it over to Trouble, who's standing by with Comp. Thank you very much, guys. Comp, thank you so much for joining me for thank the you. interview. This was a very LPL-esque pick from <laughs> Bo uh, in the last game, the Nidalee. Were you guys prepared for that? Uh, not really, we had no idea they were the one to play this. It's just we kind of knew that the way they drafted the one-two with Nidalee and Nautilus, they kind of will play crazy early game. Uh -huh. And I think this game kind of reminded me game three versus JDG, uh, where Kanavi just flashed over Drake level two. Very and we like, yeah, yeah, it's like I actually got deja vu kind of from that game. So it was really nice that we just matched again, and this time we ended up killing them. So, yeah. Absolutely, you didn't just kill them. This was a slow, uh, yeah, a slow game for them, I would have to say. In terms of, you absolutely popped off in the bot lane. We chatted happy with your regular split performance. How are you feeling now that you played such a good game? Uh, well, I'm actually feeling more healthier because I was actually like mm -hmm. kind of sick, right, for a few, for almost the whole week. Uh, but also I think, the way me and Trimby kind of figure out how the meta is right now and all of this is completely different than the regular season, right? I think in regular season we kind of experience some stuff like Jin, Jin Rakan and some Ezreal Nami lanes which didn't end up going very well, right? But right now I think we kind of figure out how we want to play, right? And I think we are kind of back to where we left last year. 
I love to hear that because in PGL, Trimpy also said that he wasn't feeling his best also during the regular split. He didn't have the confidence that was needed. How are the comms right now? Because this looks extremely dominant. Uh, it's been great. I think everyone's having so much fun overall. Like, I think, I mean, we're even more bonded than last year in a way. I think everyone just kind of um, try hard more, right? I don't yep. think it's only because of the one change. I think just people are hanging out uh, with each other a lot, like making jo uh, making funny jokes, all of this. So I think the atmosphere is just being really great, right? You kind of feel that you are actually a group of friends. You could be friends like in real life, right? But in the end, you are also players in, in the same team. So it's been really great, yeah. Love the fact that you guys are also colleagues and friends yeah. at the same time. Now, of course, right behind us is going to be Matt and G2 just in a little bit. Do you have any thoughts on how this best of three will go? <clears throat> um, I would assume G2 to win. I think it, it can be a 2-1. I can see the series being 2-1. Honestly, I think both teams kind of had shaky games yesterday, I would say. Yeah. So, yeah, I would probably give it 2-1 to G2. And why would you give it to G2 real briefly? Sorry? Why would you give it to G2 real quickly? Because they have been our toughest opponent overall, uh, the whole last year. And I think right now, if we didn't talk about those two best of threes and we just talk about the first the first three weeks of regular season, I think everyone would put G2 like as an S plus tier team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think probably they are just better also. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Com, for joining Thank me. You. As for us, we're going to go on to a very quick break. And when we're back, Mad versus G2. Stay tuned. Jungle, good luck. Sleeps tonight. Um, bum, bye. Let's go, guys. Let's let's bo boost the red side in it up. Photon trying to see if he can maybe make something work here. Does have ghost popped and no real way to try and stop it. <laughs> oh my god, breaking his ankles right there. I think I'm dead, okay? Yep, baby. Don't Jonas, Jonas, no flash, but I thought. Oh. I got this. Oh, I think you're right. <laughs> 